Greetings everyone, uh, Rio Grande fan back here again. And notice I'm not at a layout this time, we're actually at a workbench. We're going to show something kind of unique. Uh, a lot of people like to have signal systems on their layouts, and in order for the freight cars to get triggered by the signal system, you uh, have to have a detectable wheel set on your cars. So once again, I'm here with uh, Doug Geiger, and we're going to show you how we make resistor wheel sets by soldering a surface mount resistor to the axle and to the back of the wheel across the insulated joint. And uh, this is just one of many methods out there, but this one looks really tried and true and it looks like it works really well. So uh, stay tuned and we're going to show you that coming up next. Okay, so here's our wheel set. And one of the things you got to make sure you got a wheel set that's only one end insulated and the other end is not insulated. Some wheel sets are both insulated and that's not going to work. Also, you got to have a wheel set that's got a metal axle. A plastic axle will not work. So, to start with, we want to remove some of this plating that's on the back sides of the wheel. So, first of all, we got to make sure we got the right end. So, if you can see that, this end is the metal end, so that's not the insulated joint. There's the insulated joint. Usually you can see that from a little plastic that they use to insulate the axle. So we're just going to scrape the back of that wheel set. Okay, and we're going to scrape some of the axle. And I'm just using a fairly dull X-Acto blade here. Okay, we'll do a couple of them here. So you got to make sure you got the right end. So we're just scraping some of that plating or blackening or whatever. Some wheel sets is very, a lot of that stuff is on there and some wheel sets are very clean, but you still need to scrape it. Um, okay, got to make sure I got the right end. Okay. Then we'll just scrape some more here. And it's good to do these in a, you know, do 20 or 50 or 100 or whatever, once you get it all set up. Now, you also notice that I've got my wheel set sitting on a piece of paper towel here so that the wheels don't roll all over my workbench. These are Reebok wheels, but any kind of wheel will work, inner mountains or Atlas, again, you got to just make sure they don't have plastic axles, because that will not work. Okay, get the right end here. Okay. All right, now we're going to get our surface mount resistors. And I use a 5K 1206. That's the size of the re resistor here. And these are fairly large. But if you get any smaller than this, they're a little bit um, kind of problematic to use with the tweezers. Plus, if you get them too small, you can't bridge that little piece of plastic on the insulation. So let's just open this up. And we'll get some surface mount resistors here. Put them in a box. Okay. Some people use 10K. I use 5K. You can use whatever you want. All right, so we're going to Take a little bit of CA, all right, and my tweezers. I'll pick up a surface mount resistor, and I'm going to lay that right over the top of the insulated spot, and I'm going to make sure that that one end touches the back of the wheel. Okay, do another one. And if you notice, I'm putting the resistor on so that the label is up because that's where the pads are for the solder. Okay. Do another one here. See, if you use too small a resistor, you cannot pick them up. Now, if you're doing HON3, you might have to go to a smaller resistor, smaller size resistor not a smaller 
amount, just a smaller size. Okay. Do another one here. Come on. Sometimes they don't want to behave. But you got to make sure that it goes against that wheel back. There. And surface mount resistors are so cheap that if you lose one or you get too much glue on it, just peel it off and start over. Ah, like this one is doing. <laughs> Come on. Sometimes the CA wants to grab. Okay, now that we've got that on, now we want to take a little bit of accelerator and set them. Because you don't want them moving while you're soldering. So just a little bit of accelerator. And I'm using a tool from Micromark. This is a little eyelet with a little tiny bit of accelerator in it. Just touch the axle. Okay. All right. Now the next step <coughs> is we use a little clamp to make sure that this wheel set is not rolling around on my workbench. So I like these little small little clamps. Okay, now another ingredient that we definitely have to have is you have to have some very good flux. And I like liquid flux. This is flux for silver solder. It's stay clean. I'm not using silver solder, but I just like their flux. Paste flux will not work. It is not very effective. And it's a mess. So we're just going to use a little flux on these. And just a nice big glob of flux. Liquid flux on there, and you only want to do maybe five at a time because the flux will dry out. All right, now the other ingredient here is a very good temperature controlled soldering iron. I use a Weller. As you can see, it's up to about 800 degrees. Anything less than about 800 degrees, and you don't have enough heat. If it's a very small iron, you don't have enough heat and you have to put too much heat then on the wheel set and you run the risk of melting the insulator joint. The other is a very, very fine tip on your soldering iron. Now, some people clean their soldering iron by ro rolling the soldering iron tip in a wet paper towel or a wet sponge. I don't like that way because that reduces the temperature on the tip. So what I do, I use my pants. <laughs> but you could also use a cloth if you needed to. Okay, so now we, that's ready. All right, the next ingredient we do is a very fine solder. And this is 0.025 diameter, the 6040 solder. All right, and it's got a little bit of flux in the solder. So... Get in close. I use a magnifier to see this. And just a little bit right there in the corner. Come on. There we go. You don't want to be a lot. Sometimes you just have to kind of move the solder around. And you're going in and out very quickly. If your tip gets dirty. All 
All right. Now we want to check them. So we use a multimeter. Pop the clamps off. And we'll check them. Here we go. 5.05. We're right on the money on that one. 4.9. Fine. That's within tolerance. 3.69. That's okay. Once in a while, if the plating wasn't taken off all the way, you'll get a higher reading. You might get 12 or whatever. There's a 5.3. And the last one, 5.09. So all five out of five were perfect. Then the last piece we'll do is paint them. Because obviously, let's see if I can show you that. All right. So now you can see where the solder is. Well, you don't want to leave it like that because that doesn't look very good. Okay. All right. As you see, it's right against the back side of that wheel set right there. That's very critical. If that's not against it, when you glued that in there, you can't get the solder to bridge that. It has to be touching it. Then the last piece is you paint it. I like this Model Master color, chocolate brown, um, but use whatever you want. You can use acrylics or enamels, whatever you like, for, to get that rusty, dark color for your wheel sets. And that's all there is to it. So you can make your own resistance wheel sets very quickly, very cheaply. Don't have to use the paste. You don't have to use the silver uh, epoxy which is very expensive and can dry out very quickly and this method makes it very efficient very quick well there you have it a great tutorial once again by doug geiger uh, showing us how to make resistor wheel sets if you uh, again have a signaling system and you need resistors for your freight cars to be able to be detected by your signal system and your block occupancy detectors it's a great way to add a, a nice easy cheap resistor to your uh, axles your cars. So uh, once again, thanks to Doug Geiger for showing us this, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Keep your trains rolling, and uh, Rio Grande fan out.